morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world. And if you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. Today, sadly, again, not walking on the beach. I'm really busy the last couple of days, so doing a beautiful view from the garden. Four amazing Bitcoin charts, that's five fingers, Didi, maybe even five amazing Bitcoin charts. A trading tip, a travel tips, and live advice, talking about the news, a shitload of happening. Bitcoin 52K, it is Friday. We are going into the weekend. What will happen to Bitcoin? Will it be a very bullish weekend or will it be a very dumped weekend? Let's see what the charts have to say. Bam. The first chart for today, guys, is the four hour chart. As you can see, we are hitting exactly the resistance that I talked about yesterday. I told you yesterday, we will hit that green line and that green line will be a huge resistance for us to break. Now we can see this uh, previous uh, candle here, this one has a long wick again. This is a hammer candle. I've been educating you about the hammer candle. This mainly means that we are gonna move up again. So I am seeing a very beautiful weekend ahead. I don't think we will see a dump in the weekend. I do think we will see another pump in the weekend to the next level. And the next level, I've also shared with you guys on the chart, that next level is all the way up there. That's 66K. Of course, 62K is also a level that is a little bit resistance. So everything between 60 and 66K would for me be a local top. And would for me be a possibility for Bitcoin again to raise with 10, maybe even 20%. 20% at 60K is 12K. We would drop then back to 48K, still a very beautiful price. A price we would be very happy with two weeks ago. Of course, you get spoiled because of this 50K price at the moment. But believe me, as long as we stay above that 40K level, guys, that is massive for Bitcoin. That will lead into prices way above 100K in the next couple of months, all the way up into 2025. As you can see here, again, a lot of Bitcoins were being accumulated by the spot ETFs on the 14th of February. $339 million worth of Bitcoins, guys. The day before, 630. The day before that, 490. The day before that, 540. The day before that, 405 million. This is a shitload of Bitcoins that's being bought up by all these spot ETF companies, guys. And yes, of course, at the moment, BlackRock's iBit is the biggest one. I think they just surpassed 100,000 Bitcoins in their portfolio. So they have now 100,000 Bitcoins. And that within one month time, they are growing really fast. We can see something really cool on this chart. There's the Bitcoin price history and the lock scale. I always told you that we will fill these cups before we go into the second part of the bull market. If you now look onto this chart, you can see that that cup was mostly filled after the halving. Look at 2013 there, after the halving was filled. Look into 2016 there, after the halving, it was filled. And look at 2020, even there, after the halving, that cup was filled. And with filled, I mean that the price reached the previous all-time high. Now this fourth halving, in April 2024, the cup is closer to being filled than normally. Normally, we will start to go up to that level of the previous all-time high after the halving, just like in 2020, just like in 2016. In 2016, you can see we also start to grow to the cup top, and then we pulled back before we went after the halving and we closed that top. In 2020, you can see the same. We went up to 14K, we dropped back to 6K, and then again we went up to 20K to close that cup. The question now is, are we gonna pull back before this halving or because of all the bullishness at the moment and all the buying pressure because of the spot ETS, how are we gonna close this gap before the halving and reach 69 case already before April? And a lot of people think that's gonna happen. So that makes me think, hmm, maybe we won't reach it exactly and have a small retrace before we do it after the halving again. This is a two monthly chart guys. On this two monthly chart, you can see two important lines, the dotted blue line and a dotted red line. That's from the moment that we break the previous all-time high, we mostly see a pullback, and then again, bam, a massive bull market. We saw this from 2016 to 2017. Yes, from the blue line, we went up, but we had a small retrace, 25, 30%, before we went into that massive run. 2016, 17, we had six of these retraces of 30%. You don't see them on this chart because it's a two-monthly chart. And all of these retraces happened, for example, in a month. Just go to the one monthly chart to educate you a little bit more. But what you can see now is that we are repeating that history on the two monthly chart. So which also indeed indicates, hey, we can push all the way up to 62K, 
see a 20 to 30 percent retrace to 45 to maybe even 43k and then break out again to this parabolic run uh, between May and September 2025 in my honest opinion to create a new all-time high. This is how the charts work. Pause the video and check it for yourself. You can also of course see on the bottom that MACD there climbing and crossing exactly like it did at the same moment at those vertical dotted lines as in the previous bull markets. Interesting chart. I found it on Twitter. I forgot who it posted, but all the credits go, of course, to the person that posted that one. On this three-day chart, we can see a bullish crossover happening above the zero line. Normally, the bullish crossover happens down below the zero line. Like you can see in the left purple on the circle on the side, that is when we have a bullish crossover, the blue across the orange line, down below the zero line. That is, of course, very bullish. Even more bullish is when we see a crossover above the zero line, just like we're seeing now. This is very bullish on the three-day chart. This could lead to a very massive push in the midterm for Bitcoin. Not today, not tomorrow, but the midterm, it could be very bullish because of this beautiful display of the bullish crossover above the zero line. Interesting data. You don't see this very often. I hope you really enjoy the charts, guys, and I hope you also understand the short-term volatility that everyone is expecting could happen. Yes, you can always put your buy orders at lower levels, but at the moment, there's such a disbalance in the supply and demand that the bullishness keeps going on. Just look at that three-day chart, at the one-day chart. Everything tells us we want to go up. Even now again, I saw this hammer wick, long wick, small body. We want to go up. There is too much buying pressure at the moment and there is not a lot of people that sell their Bitcoins. So the price is increasing. The chart that I share with you where we can say, hey, maybe we will go close to the previous all time high and then have a 20 to 30 percent correction. That is something I can believe. I don't see this 20 to 30 percent correction happening right now at these 52K levels, 55, maybe 60 and 62. Around these levels, we can see a correction back to 45K. 49k something like that but why would you try to catch that exact top and exact bottom dollar cost average buy a little bit of bitcoin now buy a little bit of bitcoin as we go up if we dump you buy an extra little bit of bitcoin and maybe on average then you paid 50k for a bitcoin or 49k for a bitcoin but when bitcoin goes up you have dollar cost average into bitcoin and you will dollar cost average out of bitcoin near the top take your profits on different levels now let's jump into the next part The trading tip for today, guys, is another project I want you to take a look at. The project's name is D Your Dex. It's a very cool decentralized project creating a really cool product with a use case. They now just launched their referral program, which means if you sign up to D Your Dex and you sign up to the referral and you start to share their links, you will not only be earning 10 D Your tokens for signing up and referring people, but also 10% on all the revenue made by the referrals lifetime for you. So if you sign up now to DRDX, and believe me, they have a really cool use case, just check the website to educate yourself and to really understand what this project is creating. It will be really usable for all people out there that have altcoins and everything. And if you understand that, sign up, then you get a referral link, start to share this referral link with all your people around you, and you will get 10% of all the trading fees they will be making which could lead for you to a monthly income, which could lead for you to a little bit more freedom. So all these affiliate and referral programs, you should take part of them. Diordex, I'm an investor in Diordex. It is a really cool project. I believe when everything comes out, the token, etc., that you will really enjoy what they built for you guys out there. It is built for the crypto community that got sick of all these dysfunctional websites that we need to look at when we need to scroll. Just like a few examples like Dex tools, or for example, like CoinMarketCap. All of these websites are like not connecting. DRDEX is creating a combination of all those websites that you're using now, different platforms in one beautiful command center. Really interesting project. And yes, of course, when you start to share your referral link, you can get a lifetime revenue built out of that because you will earn 10% of all the trading fees that all those referrals will generate for you guys. Now, really cool project, Diordex, take a look at it. Let's jump into the travel tip. 
The travel debt today is about vaccinations. Vaccinations for rabies or like for malaria, all that stuff that they make you afraid of when you go to your health center in your country. They will tell you, you need to be vaccinated for rabies. You need to be do this, we need to do this. The thing that I want to educate you about is that yes, of course it's safe if you have children to vaccinate them to rabies because they could be playing on the beach with a dog and a dog can buy them, for example. But it's way more cheaper in the countries where you fly to than you do it, for example, in the Netherlands. When we went in the Netherlands to this health center, they told us at that time, yeah, it's around 200 euros per person uh, to be vaccinated against rabies. Exactly. What does it mean then? It means then that you have like 48 hours to go to the doctor instead of 24 hours to go to the doctor when your child is bitten by a dog. So I was 200 euros. That's like five times 200 euros, that's like 1,000 euros. So I started to search in Thailand and all the forums. In Thailand, for example, the same vaccination will cost you 16 euros. And you know what the most beautiful part is? Those people come to your house, just where you sit, and they do it. It's like top service, it's 16 euros. Why would you do that for 200 euros if you can do it for 16 euros? And then, aside of that, the chance of a dog biting your child with rabies is very small. So yeah, I don't even know if you need to do that. And when it comes to malaria, guys, yes, I know they are always making you afraid. Yeah, in those areas in Thailand, there is malaria. And in those areas, there's no malaria. Yes, as if those neighboring countries like Burma or whatever country it is, have no malaria because the mosquito knows exactly where the border is and it will not fly across that border. Just look at those malaria jars. There on the border side of Thailand, yes. In Thailand, no. So the fly of the mosquito doesn't fly across the border, doesn't have a passport, whatever it is, I don't know. I, we never felt for that, we did it once. On the first trip in 2001, Romain and I took the malaria medicine at that time. Uh, for me, it was all fine, but Romain got like really not like well because of them. Like her hair started to fall out a little bit and all that strange like side effects of the tablets. So we never took malaria tablets anymore. And we also never vaccinated any of the children anymore against rabies and dogs and all that stuff. You, you just educate your kids to not pet all dogs all over the beach like for example now that was a travel tip don't fall for all the fear that they are creating when it comes to going to a new country because these new countries are probably way more safer than your own country and yes the quality of health in for example Thailand in my honest opinion is way higher than where I come from in the Netherlands but you need to be here and see here to believe it that's my travel tip for today let's jump into the next part The educational path for today is answering the question of many of my followers because there are, a lot of them are Dutch. I think like 27% of my followers are Dutch and they're all now asking me, Didi, what's going to happen with Bybit? And that's a valid question, of course, because Bybit sent an email to all of you that they are going to stop some services in the Netherlands for Netherlands people. That doesn't mean that Bybit is stopping or leaving. It just needs to stop offering certain products that they are offering. And those certain products are mostly the derivatives, the futures, all those high risk leverage trading possibilities that you have on Bybit. Most of my followers and subscribers to Bybit don't even use it. They mostly use spot. So they buy spot pairs, just buy some altcoins or buy Bitcoin. And sometimes they trade with Bitcoin spot leverage. So you buy Bitcoin, you use the leverage to borrow a little bit more Bitcoin to go with more Bitcoins into your long or into your short. That is what most of my signups do use. Most of them don't use all these derivative contracts or the future contracts. And that part, Bybit is not going to offer anymore to the Dutch clients. I know you all want to know now, can I still use my Bybit card? As far as I have understood that all the signups till the 5th of March can just continue using their Bybit card. I still need to get this confirmed by the Bybit team. I've been asking them every day, hey guys, let me know. I need to update my users in the Netherlands. Can they still use their card? But as far as I can read and understand and the answer of the Bybit Europe team, they told us, hey, these cards that are signed up all the way till the 5th of March, you can still be using them. I will directly let you know when I get an answer of the official worldwide Bybit team in Singapore, I will def definitely let you know if you can still use the card and what products you won't be able to use. So you can still use Bybit the same way you've been using it for your spot trades, to buy altcoins, to do all the other competitions, do the staking, it's all still possible. It's mainly all those high risk trading possibilities on Bybit that won't be offered to the Netherlands anymore. And don't blame Bybit for this, but blame the Netherlands for this. Your 
prime minister and all those political people with their suits that want to keep you like a baby, that want to make you small and poor and don't want you to be risk. No, you cannot afford to take a risk in trading because then you might get rich. You're too stupid to do that. We will say that you can't do it because we are afraid that you're going to lose money. And when you lose money, you can't pay taxes anymore and you can't pay taxes anymore. Then we cannot buy a new speedboat for King Willem Alexander. That's how it works. No more countries, just leave people to do what they want to do because we want to trade on buy with. We want to trade with leverage. We want to be able to decide for ourselves what is good and what is bad. But those centralized governments in the Netherlands, almost turning slowly into this communistic state where they say, this is what you can do, this is what you can't do, this is what you can do, this is... I don't like that. But still, Bybet did their best to keep most of the products still alive for you guys and they will probably be all be alive. And it will also, of course, come soon with new solutions for those people that want to take a little bit more risk in trading. There's many other platforms, non-KWC, that we can slowly move to. There's even two platforms I've been investing in, but I will come to that back later in a new video. So don't be too afraid, don't be too shocked. It's not that Bible is leaving you, it's not that they are taking your funds, nothing is gonna happen. They are just taking away a certain part of the high-risk trading possibilities on the platform for the Dutch market. Oh, and by the way, if you sign up to Bybit using my link down below, from the 15th of February to the 15th of March, there's a really cool competition where you can win up to five Bitcoins in a lucky draw. You just need to perform a couple of tasks, not too many. When you sign up, you will get a page where you can see exactly which tasks you need to do. It's like, I think, three or four tasks. And when you do them, you enter the lucky draw of five Bitcoins. You can win up to five Bitcoins with that lucky draw just by signing up to Bybit. Until the 5th of March, you can still use Bybit the way you used to use it. So yes, I would always sign up now, use the link, and try to win up to five Bitcoins before you decide maybe to leave Bybit after the 5th of March when you have not that access anymore to all those high-risk possibilities when it comes to trading. But for now, still signing up, using my link, and winning up to five Bitcoins is still possible. Bam. For now, that was the answer to your question. Of course, I will keep you up to date, but now let's jump into the next part. The news for today, again about the spot ETF in Bitcoin, guys. Uh, this is massively growing. At the moment, from all the Bitcoins bought in all the markets together, almost 75% of those Bitcoins are being bought by the spot ETFs. So 75% of all the Bitcoins being accumulated is being done by the 10 spot ETF companies. So only 25% by the retail investors and all the other people. So this is creating a lot of buying pressure, guys. And the more they want to accumulate, I think yesterday again, they accumulated $350 million worth of Bitcoin. The day before, $600 million worth of Bitcoin. It's every day a few hundred million dollar worth of Bitcoin divided by 40K and you know how many Bitcoins that is, is being bought up by just a spot ETS. The rest by the rest of the market. FOMO still needs to kick in for the retail. They will always kick in when, oh, oh yeah, now it's going above 69K, above the previous order high. Maybe we should trust Didi. Maybe now we should buy Bitcoin. Not at 16K, but probably at 60K. And then they will take still profit to 100k, but they could have taken profit from 20k to 100k, which would have been a little bit more profit. But the spot ETFs are changing the game a little bit. We can see this drastically. Because of the buying pressure of all the spot ETFs, we can see that the price has been increasing with around $1,000 each day. If this buying pressure continues and there is no dumping anymore of Grayscale and other spot ETFs, then it could lead to a 60k price before the halving even. And it doesn't mean we can't dump anymore. I told you that already before in the video. We can always reach 60K, dump 20% to 50K, and uh, then again build up to this new autumn high in 2025. At least that is what I expect. As always, in January, we will see a dump again. So all the way up to December, beautiful climbing around Christmas. Wow, we have a new all-time high. And then January, we have a crash again. Everybody getting depressive again. And February, March, April, all the way up to September 2025. Again, the real bull market top. Before again, a huge crash in December or January in 2026 into a bear market bottom. Zoom out, play the big game. That's what you need to do. Now, that was the news for the day. Spot ETFs creating a shitload of volume. 
buying pressure, the price will keep rising. We can see the long wicks, everything I'd be hearing. That means people want to take profit, but they're all being bought up. This could lead to a push all the way up to 60K, guys. That's happy times for Bitcoin. Last part of the video, of course, uh, the life quote, guys. Yes, and yesterday, of course, I was about optimistic. You need to be optimistic. And this one will be, again, about the same thing. Because the pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity. Ah, that's too hard. Ah, that's too difficult. The optimist sees an opportunity in every difficulty. That's the other way around. An optimist will see a huge problem that he needs to solve, but he sees it as an opportunity. Hey, when I solve this, I can, for example, monetize this. I can buy a little bit more freedom with the money I make by solving this. The pessimist will be like, nah, too much work, impossible, won't do that. I will just keep working for a boss and just, do, and just doing my thing to make a little bit of money and I will be stuck into the system. The pessimist will never grow. They are too careful. They don't believe in everything is possible. I am possible instead of impossible. The optimist does believe that impossible means I am possible. That impossible thing is there for you to solve. That's what an optimist thinks. I will go and solve that issue for the world and by that even monetize it and by that create a freedom life for me and my family. An optimist sees an opportunity in every difficulty and a pessimist sees a difficulty in every opportunity. Don't be a pessimist. Always be the optimist. Always believe that you will be able to solve certain difficulties, certain problems that you run into in life or certain issues that a niche market has. If it comes to being an entrepreneur, one of the wisest lessons I learned is focus on a niche market. Don't try to catch the whole world directly. That is very difficult. Take a very small market and that market, for me it was the Bitcoin market, a niche market, just people that believe in Bitcoin. Take that market and be optimistic about all the difficulties that you can see in that market and try to solve them with your product. That is when you will be a good entrepreneur. That is when you will be monetizing your skills, your talents, and being optimistic about the possibilities in life. And that is when your life will change. Look around you. What are your passions? Is that passion a niche market? Does that passion have something to be solved? Can you solve that? If you can, create a product, a course, whatever around that, put it live and start to become an entrepreneur. You can even do it next to your job. And when your entrepreneur, your business starts to grow and grow and grow and you make more income over there, then you say to your boss, goodbye, I have built up my own business, I am an entrepreneur, I make enough, I can go and spread my wings and fly the world, I won't, don't want to pay tax anymore because you are paying me this slavery salary that I again need to give to the tax companies in the Netherlands with a ceiling of 3K or 4K a month. Be an optimist, that will change your life. That was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video, guys. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the charts, about everything else in this video? Short but powerful. I wish you an amazing Friday, an amazing weekend. Next week, yes, I will be walking the beach a little bit more again. This week, it was too busy. Tomorrow, on Saturday, English AMA. On Sunday, again, a Dutch AMA. Probably will do them again on the Rumble platform just to make it grow there as well because I want you also to sign up to my Rumble channel because if I would be deleted from YouTube or hashtag uh, you don't belong here, <laughs> something like that, then yes, you can always watch all my videos at Rumble as well. So use it as my backup or maybe as your main channel when you want to see me uh, doing the lives on Saturday and Sunday, guys. Thank you. Wish you a beautiful weekend. See you tomorrow again. Bam.